Do you still remember when you've built your first website? Back then, websites were basically a bunch of HTML, maybe a bit of CSS. So for me, I created a cool, fancy layout in Photoshop. Then I sliced all the things of that layout into different blocks and tried to replicate this HTML structure with a table. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, idiot! Which of course looked terrible, wasn't responsive at all, but back then there was no such thing as responsive, right? But today we want to talk about basically the same concept because after the last incidents uh, that happened to both the Ionic Academy and my blog, I consider switching from this huge WordPress website to a static site constructor and what this is, what it means, how it works, all of this will be discussed in this vlog, so let's do this. Hey everyone, Simon here, back with a new vlog and this week we're gonna actually dive a bit more into some coding topic because as I said, we wanna talk about static site generator. I heard this term, I think, maybe even some years ago but I never really paid any attention because I was or I had started my own blog, the didactic blog on WordPress simply because WordPress is so super easy. You get like millions of themes, um, you got thousands or perhaps also millions of plugins that you can easily install and you get all the functionalities. You know, I'm a developer, you're a developer, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Recently, as you might know, um, a few things happened to my WordPress site, that's when I decided it is finally time to move to a static site. I decided that I will also try to build the devdactic block at least with a static site. So let me show you the steps that I took uh, up until this point. The page is not yet deployed, but I just want to give you a little behind the scenes of what I did so far and maybe you can also do the same if you currently own a WordPress blog or if you just want to start with a static site. So let's take a look. First of all, the static site generator is basically just a little framework that helps you to convert um, files that are written perhaps in Markdown into a website with a uh, given structure. This package will be hosted on your server, so no database connection is made when users are browsing a page and the, state, uh, the page is simply a lot faster. And there are, I think, three big players in this. So there's Hugo, which is using the Go language, um, which seems to be the fastest framework, um, actually. So I've written a few articles about this. Um, then we got Gatsby JS. Um, that's what Josh is using as far as I know. Um, it is a bit more using uh, React in the background, so React.js, um, something that I'm not super comfortable with uh, and therefore try to avoid. And then there's also Jekyll, which I think from those three pages actually looks like it's from the last century, but it is actually pretty good. And that's also the reason why I picked Jekyll, um, because I discarded Gatsby um, simply because of React and um, I had really no interest in learning React at this point. So um, although I think Gatsby offers a lot of great um, plugins and especially themes, so I think from the three pages this is the coolest one. Um, I just discarded this. So then also Hugo or however it is called uh, was recommended to me because of the speed but the thing is um, I barely rebuild the block so maybe once a week perhaps twice a week so I really don't care about the building speed of my static site and also I think there are not that many themes for Hugo as there are for Jekyll as far as I heard. Okay there are, seems to be enough um, I guess there would be some for me in here um, but still I decided against this um, because I also had no interest in learning the Go language at this point and Jekyll is using uh, actually Ruby uh, underneath so I have been using Ruby in the past a bit really just a bit uh, now a bit about the syntax I also like the liquid syntax to create HTML pages so I just tried to uh, follow Jekyll okay so that was my selection process what I did then was basically uh, look for something to get my WordPress data to Jekyll for which I use the WordPress to Jekyll exporter. Um, that's just a plugin you install in WordPress. 
um, actually I couldn't uh, execute it from the WordPress backend but good thing is I know how to connect with a command line to my WordPress blog so then I was able to create a little zip file which contains uh, let's look into this basically every information that your WordPress blog holds so if I open this um, where do we start start I don't know the dev blog um, not that interesting maybe start here uh, in here you will see how a page is built but not all of this really works with Jekyll the most important part is actually the WordPress content which holds all the um, uh, great images that I used in the past. I think this this was actually the very first tutorial I ever created with this nice old um, no idea why I have uh, so many different sizes of it. That's already the second language using... <laughs> okay, that was a great time. Mm. Um, uh, but you can see you got all the um, files in here. And then in the posts folder you get your actual posts also sorted by date. So if we go to this year um we can see the sqlite query tutorial was new uh, at the top this plugin prints out all the important information actually this can be removed but anyhow uh, i have to take a look at this if we really need all of this in the end and then we got the image connected and finally um, a tag as well in the category so all the information is up front in this markdown file and that's also how you write your posts in the future then and then this is followed by a lot of content and everything in the article um, the problem at this point was that um, is this the original stuff yeah uh, if you export from WordPress and I was using a nice syntax editor, um, I get the blocks like this. The problem is with the markdown files and uh, the Jekyll, you actually need this to be like this JavaScript or whatever language you got in the block. So three uh, fences and then once this is over the code like again uh, at this point. And also, of course, I had to um, understand uh, that some code blocks were HTML, some were JavaScript, some were command line um, uh, commands, I would say. So that's why I came up uh, with a list of replacements that I can run on this export. So this is just to remove something and then I got replace all pre-text for JavaScript with uh, this one. So replace all pre-text. Uh, where the pre is followed by ionic start that's basically always the first block where I got the shell command so that's bash and if the block is starting with pre class language default that's basically always HTML then and so on so I got a lot of these um, I'm really not that good with the command line but I know how to replace some stuff and trial and error made me come up with all of this and in the end I also had to fix some uh, image links to get to the right data format okay so once i got this data format fixed actually i did this a bit later i installed jekyll um not really a huge problem to install it especially on mac os it's pretty easy uh you can install it with or you can install brew uh, ruby with brew first of all and then later simply uh, install jekyll in your application and then you can install gems so that's a bit more the ruby environment thing also um, i found a nice um theme which is called i don't know affiliate or whatever which look basically at this um, i really wanted or i don't know if i got this yeah if i'm on a post and scroll up I want to see my uh, top bar again so that was a big requirement that I really just wanted to have also I like uh, how clean this one was it got a nice landing page um, we got the posts about whatever we got a little call to action up here and all in all this was just a nice design so I used this um, I changed some of the values which can be done in the configuration block for your page so that's the config jaml file i don't know how to call this in english um, and this has uh, some information about your page in general also the google analytics stuff is included in here 
um, even discuss which I use for uh, the comments on the blog. So the authors and their images and whatever, Twitter. Then you got a few plugins defined. I already added a few uh, in order to show um, a Twitter timeline or show YouTube videos. Actually, I don't know how or if I show the YouTube videos already. Uh, I really, I don't know. Um, I have no transformation for YouTube. I don't know really if it works. Let's just hope it. Um, then you can define basically everything for the static generator to tell it, okay, this is page, there are categories, these are the links, please use these files, use this highlighter and the syntax highlighting system. Um, so most of this is predefined. This might look a bit scary, but give it a try, install uh, Jekyll, it is really very, very easy. So then you copy over your WordPress content um, and all the posts. And if you want, you can then also dive into the HTML files in which you will finally find the liquid uh, layout that I talked about before, which looks a bit like this um, and that. So it is not super hard. Um, it is not really beautiful, um, but I can work with this. I know how this works. This actually looks a bit like Angular. Um, at some stages, other HTML files like my share bar are included and it's just easy to navigate around here we include even the discuss um, html file which is in the includes so you can basically create these blocks that will then be included in your pages and at some point you can then go ahead and run um, jekyll surf which will give you a nice live reload surf of your application and if we do it right now, I can show you what my page currently looks like. So these were the steps um, that I took up until this point. My page is, I think, actually like 90% converted uh, and I could deploy it at this point. I, um, I actually don't know why I haven't done it. Uh, I really want to test things out a bit. So I want to make sure that the email signups for my email list are working, that all the most important tutorials are working, the navigation is working, um, the privacy stuff is working, uh, the contact is working. I really have to do a bit more of testing on the page, um, but I think then it is time to roll it out, although there are a few things that I also want to talk about. But first, let's take a look at how the page looks right now. So here we are, welcome to the new DevDectic page. Um, if you haven't seen it before, now let's start on the main page. That's the page right now. As you can see, it actually takes time to load. Um, it is, I would say it is pretty old. I wanted to rework um, part of it already in the past. Not really a lot of people, I guess, are even paying attention to most of what's in here. Um, and then we got the blog stuff, we got some information, recent posts, and we can dive into the articles. Um, actually, this one I think is broke on the example, let's dive into the calendar. And here we got the new version uh, using the affiliate theme. Um, you see, I transferred this to the join the academy uh, call to action up here. We got the categories, we got the blog. We actually also got this initial sign up, which triggers um, a pop up of my email list provider convert kit. Um, you can also dive into right here. Um, I added a recent post uh, plugin, which takes the last recent posts, of course, and bundles them into the home page as well. And at the bottom, I also got this Twitter plugin and the quick links, even got the privacy bar. And as you can see, if I move around here, this is just blazing fast. You see, everything is basically coming up in seconds. So there's really like no loading time at all. Uh, from the UI perspective, I kind of like how it looks actually. Uh, I think it's even a bit more, I didn't know I include a share plugin. Uh, I think it's even a bit nicer than the current um, uh, design. Maybe you can let me know what you think about this. Um, I already changed some. Um, the only problem I have with this are the code blocks. So I really don't like how the code blocks look, look in here. So as you can see right here, there's, I don't know why in this case, but here's like no syntax highlighting at all. 
Uh, let's maybe dive into an Ionic post. I think they should look at least a bit better. Uh, let's see, Firebase. Okay, here we got at least some syntax highlighting. But the problem is that previously on my blog I had um, a very nice syntax highlighting including um, marking specific lines and that is something that's not yet working with Ruby um, or the syntax highlighting plugins available for Jekyll. Um, I really don't know, I think this is a big plus for the editor I'm currently using. I can really uh, highlight if I got a large block like this. Um, you see, if we then take a look at this, I cannot highlight anything in here. I can, maybe I just have to make smaller blocks then. Um, perhaps you can let me know what you think about this problem. For me, actually, I think it is a huge problem. So that's also one of the reasons I haven't deployed it yet. Um, so I, I'm really a bit lost here. I don't know if I should just jump into it and do it. Um, then I would leave the, I'll lose the information that I created for all the tutorials. So for all these blocks, I specify which lines to mark and I always edit. Um, so I can, uh, show to the people which of the lines are important and I don't, I, I just can't do it anymore in here, uh, which makes me a bit sad that I will lose the information. So maybe you can tell me something about this, what your thoughts are about this. Finally, besides what I've shown you so far, there's one more plugin, uh, or no, one more problem, um, and that is about scheduling posts in advance. Um, I always create my content upfront, and with WordPress, you can just set the dates when it will be released, just like YouTube videos. Everything is timed perfectly when I create it upfront. With the static site command uh, generator, that's basically not possible normally. Okay, I guess this uh, vlog was a bit longer than usual. Um, I still hope you enjoyed the little adventure into static site generators. Um, as you can see, the page is looking good, but there's still a lot of problems like the syntax highlighting. Some posts just have problems in their markdown files. I got the release or schedule topic. All in all, still uh, some tasks to do. The problem is, I know this is important, but it just takes time. This project, although it looks pretty finished, I guess it will take a few days, and that means it takes a few days away from the other work that I do, uh, creating these videos or writing new articles. So that's why I guess the task for finishing it will be postponed a few more weeks. But if you get any help or information on the problems um, that I showed you, just let me know them below. I would be really grateful. Sorry. If you also use the static site generator, please leave a comment below and what your experience is with it. This is my first time trying out a static site generator, so I enjoy the experience with Jekyll so far. I'm sure both of the other plugins, or the other frameworks are great as well. Just let me know your experience below and then also, of course, make sure to hit the like for the video and subscribe to this channel. Um, that would make my week perfect. So, hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you back next week again for another vlog topic not yet decided. We will see what it will be. I hope you all have a great week. Build something great with code, perhaps a static site. And then, of course, like always, happy coding, Simon.